So, earlier this year, I transformed my garage into my office. This week, I've taken that a step further, maybe got a little greedy, and transformed my garage office into a YouTube talking head studio. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that, step by step, all the way from building this wall behind me to cover up the garage door, to rolling in all the props and setting up all these lights so that it looks just right for me. My name is Nicholas Johnson, and this is The Space Warehouse. This idea came about after I started working this gig, making little internet TV show panel discussions for this trade show company that had to go virtual due to the pandemic. I had made my garage office really comfortable for me and really nice to work in, but my backdrop was still a garage door and a cinder block wall. Then I wanted something that looked a little more professional. Construction for this project was pretty short. I wanted to build a freestanding seamless wall, which meant I had to learn how to do drywall. I got a bunch of two by twos. I measured out the height of the garage door opener railing things which was a little more than seven feet. I cut those all to the same height and built myself a little frame for a wall. So after watching a dozen or so YouTube videos on the subject, I got to taping and mudding my one seam of drywall. Turns out, who knew, there's like a five inch indented well as two pieces come together that you tape and fill up with joint compound and the whole thing just magically disappears. It's, it's pretty easy actually. <laughs> So with that done, I had my wall, I had my garage door covered up, I had my space to sit in. But sitting in front of a blank white wall might be the worst choice you could do for an interview shot. It's just really boring. It needed some dressing up. I tried out a few combinations of pictures. I actually have this large format plotter printer thing at the warehouse for making floor plans and I fired out a few huge pictures. A close up of some scissors I sell. I'm an Amazon FBA seller. Uh, I'm a brand new Amazon FBA seller. I actually just got them listed. Very exciting, I'll make a video about that soon. And a picture of my wife on our recent trip out west. But everything just kind of looked like paper prints taped to a wall, which is what they were. Then it occurred to me that printer prints off a roll, so I can pretty much just set up a photo that's infinitely long, as long as it's two feet tall. And my camera has a really high resolution 47 megapixel sensor, so I took a few macro shots of things that are relevant to what I'm gonna be talking about in this channel, and I landed on this really cool close-up of my 14 to 24 fisheye lens. I got Sarah to help me mount it up, and I think it does a great job of adding interest to the wall and some context to the backdrop behind me. To me, it seems like the space that you're in should tell a little bit of a story about, you know, what you're gonna be talking about or just kind of who you are in general. Then it was just a matter of dragging in some props. And I went and got a flight case from the warehouse to keep that theme going. I got a few lenses and my Nikon D500 back there. Then I hung up this concrete pendant lamp that I made just a couple of videos ago. I did explore a second backdrop option. I went on Amazon and ordered this big piece of black fabric and some clamps so I can hang that thing up if I ever want like a darker, moodier shot. Lighting. Super quick lighting tutorial. To make this lighting setup you see here, what I'm using is starting with the key light up and to the left of my face. That does the main job of lighting me up and like my table surface. I have my practical, which is my concrete pendant lamp that I made. Its job is not necessarily to light anything up, but to be a little piece of interest in the background. And my backlight, which kind of just adds depth to everything. It'll kind of make it look a little more 3D, I guess. It'll shine on the side of my arm. It'll just kind of pull me apart from the background a little bit. Then I put a couple of little spotlights on the floor shining up at the wall to kind of give a little halo effect around me. These little black boxes are called Cube Echoes and they basically, they can just be any color. It's just a programmable battery powered spotlight. They're responsible for this blue halo around my chair on this scene setup. And then finally the fill light, which is on the opposite side of the key light and it's dimmer, but it still fills in a little bit of shadows on my face. And that's it, that's how you make, well, that's how you make what this looks like here. This compared to this uh, with no lighting is quite an incredible difference for not changing anything else. Might even be more important than how nice your camera is, is how well thought out your lighting plan is. As for my cameras, my main camera is a Sony Alpha A6600. 
For this setup here, I have the camera about 13 feet away with a 50 millimeter lens on. Even though almost nobody watches YouTube in 4K, I'm shooting in 4K so that I can punch in if I ever want to like accentuate something I'm saying or just keep the video a little more interesting by moving around the frame a little bit. When you shoot in 4K, but then generally it's watched in 1080p, you can zoom way into the same picture without losing any quality. And that's why you should always shoot in 4K if you have the ability to do so. Although the file sizes get kind of unmanageable. So that's that's camera A. I have camera B set up on my desk over there just with a wider lens. I think that's shooting at 24 millimeters right now. Uh, that's my D850. But I have my B camera set up in this case so that I can get a wide shot and you can see that I'm in a garage, I guess. For my microphone, this is like the cheaper version of a really nice microphone. This is the Amazon Basics Professional Mic 2. Um, its main strength is that it's, it will only record sound that comes in a bubble. It's called a cardioid polar pattern, but it'll only record the sound that's directly in front of it. So if somebody's watching TV just on the other side of that wall, or if the laundry machine's going or whatever, um, this mic will generally just pick up my voice, which is it's fabulous. So you wanna have any microphone at all. You don't have to buy an expensive one. This is like a this is like a hundred and twenty dollar mic. There are versions of this thing that are, they go up to thousands of dollars. Pretty much anything other than using the microphone that's built into the camera. This camera has no microphone on it, so this is this is just the camera's microphone itself, and that's what it sounds like. It's not that it's terrible. It's not that you can't understand me. But if you compare that to switching back to a studio microphone, it makes just a really big difference in like the clarity and the I don't know the niceness of the way it sounds. So those are the main components to making my little talking head YouTube studio at home. My editing suite is literally in this room, four feet to my right. So when I'm done shooting a talking head like this, I can just pick up my laptop and go plug it into my Thunderbolt hub that has all my monitors and hard drives, and I can just get to work editing, which I guess is what I'm gonna do right now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Uh, now it's it's time to it's, it's time to go.